Glory and 
praise with you. Come on, give him a hand clap of praise in this house. Come on, from the depths of your soul, Lord Jesus, we come before you. Humble in our hearts and our minds and our souls because we know without you, Lord, we're lost. And we can't make it. There's nothing that we can do by ourselves. We recognize because you live tonight. Because the power of the Holy Ghost is resonant in our lives, Jesus. We have hope in you. We have help in you. If we know we can make it a little while longer. Just a little while longer. Just a little while longer. The old song says it. Just a little while longer to stay here. Just a little while longer to wait. Just a little more time to labor in that path that's straight. I don't know about you, but I feel good in my spirit and in my soul tonight because he lives. If he wasn't living here, I'm going to tell you, if he wasn't living, you may say that stuff like the old folks said, I don't know where I would be if the Lord wasn't in my life. But honey, let me tell you something real clear tonight. I know exactly where I would be. How do you know, Bishop, where would you be? Because I was already there before Jesus passed. I'd be in a bar or a dope house. Be in a prostitution place. Come on, I'd be somewhere where God wasn't. If God wasn't here tonight, wasn't in my soul, I'd know exactly where I'd be. Maybe in the morgue. I might be in the board tonight. Maybe already dead and gone. Locked up maybe in prison. Like I should have been. According to the state. They was already planning on me spending 50 years with them. Already had my room ready. They had one waiting on me. State prosecutor was happy to give me a place to stay. In fact, he, and, he was determined to, to give me keys to it. He was going to lock it behind when I got in. <laughs> a one-way entry. <laughs> but God, but God, so glad we're in this place tonight. So glad that God has been good to us. We're here on purpose tonight. We're here on purpose tonight. Come on, somebody. Amen. I can't hear all those on the outside that are sitting on the couch or in the car. I, can't. I don't know if they'll see it now or see it in a week. I can only hear y'all. Or maybe I can. <laughs> Help us, Jesus. You all say something back to me. Let me know there's somebody still believing what I'm preaching. Praise the Lord. We're here and delighted that there are individuals that are secure in their walk. They are determined in their walk. That no matter what comes their way, they're going to stand for the word of the Lord. And they're going to come to the house of the Lord. They're going to be dedicated to the house and to the pastor, to the church. And I appreciate that today. I will always want to be biblical. And as we get ready for the word of the Lord, the Bible says that let there be two, uh, three at the most by course. One by one. You can't all start speaking at the same time because that's confusion. We know God is not the author of confusion. But the word of the Lord is here tonight and it's rich. It's already rich. I don't know about you, but it's been rich already. I appreciate the presence of the Lord that I feel in this place where every time we come in. We've had the place packed. And 
didn't feel some of this. You don't have to understand or don't have to acknowledge it. But some of our most powerful services, I mean, with just a handful of people that had a mind to serve God and a mind to worship the Lord. Some of the deepest anointings that's been in this place have been just with a few folks. I appreciate the Lord. I appreciate Him. I don't. I know that no one tonight is going to take this assignment haphazardly or take it lightly. But I've got three individuals that we're going to call on tonight. Now, as the pastor, I, I'm going to set the rules. There ought to be a whole bunch of amens out there. We talk about Bishop. When you train people, you give them a direction. You try to help them see what to do and how to do it. And I'm trying my best to encourage these that are coming tonight to get deeper into their callings and to let the Lord use them. And I believe he will tonight. I'm not afraid of anybody getting up here. I'm not afraid of anyone that's coming up here tonight. Amen. Bishop, you don't know everything. I know if I was afraid of them, they wouldn't be coming up. <laughs> well, there's only a few folks tonight. It wouldn't matter if there was a hundred. If I was scared of you, you would never get up. <laughs> but I am not afraid of anyone coming tonight. I'm going to ask to start with this tonight. Brother Jimmy is going to come. Brother Jimmy Weatherly. He's a faithful young man. Well, Bishop is your son. I don't care if it was Brother John's son, Sister Lisa's son. I don't care if it was anybody. It doesn't matter to me. If you're faithful, you're faithful. If you're, if the Bible says, give honor to him, honor is due. He's been faithful. Been faithful and his heart has been towards God. He's serious about what he's doing tonight. He's not taking this lightly. He has sought the Lord for it. How do you know? Come on. He sought the Lord for this service. He wants to help the church. He wants to help the pastor. But most of all, he wants to be able to be used by the Lord. So we're going to ask him to come. Now, my stipulation is, can you see a clock good, son? You got 10 minutes. Let the Lord use you. Come on, church say, bless Brother Jimmy Weatherly. Bless Brother Jimmy Weatherly. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. You may be seated. I came here tonight with a message from God. All right. And um, I'll be honest. At first I was a little worried that I wasn't going to be right. That I was coming with the wrong message. But after seeking help and after praying and getting along with God, and I found that what he sent me was right. All right. I want to talk to you all today about an understanding. An understanding. All right. I want you all to maybe look at someone and tell them get an understanding. Get an understanding. Get an understanding. An understanding. All right. All right. If you will turn to Acts 2.37. All right. All right. It's a good place. In Acts, a lot of things happen, but... What I want to focus on is the day of Pentecost. All right. I want to focus on the day that 3,000 were able to get an understanding. All right. All right. Were able to really get a grasp of what, what, what they need. All right. And who they need. Yes, sir. And who they need is God. Yes, sir. 
who they need is Jesus. Come on. I want to start. It says, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. And they said unto Peter, to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? They heard what they've done. They heard the mistake that they made. They heard that they crucified someone when they shouldn't have. All right. And when they realized this, as it says, they were pricked in their heart. They were upset because they knew that they were wrong. And so they went to Peter and the rest of the apostles. And they asked them, what shall we do? What shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized. Right. Every one of you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, All right. for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. All right. yes, amen. This is an instance of understanding. Yes, sir, it is. When he said this, when Peter said this, those people got an understanding. Yes, sir. Now you might just think, so what? They now know how to be saved. They know what they did wrong and they know what they can do. Having an understanding is important, especially in these days, All right. especially in these trying times yes, where the world, the government, everyone is trying to take away that understanding. Right. They're trying to take away the ability to get to know God on, and to get to know you. what you need. All right. The government, the world is trying to take that away. It's trying to take away the gift that God gave us, All right. an ability to use this book Come on. and to understand and to do what you need to do yes, which is to be baptized Come and on. to be filled with the Holy Ghost Amen. they want to they want to take away Come on. they want to take away the knowledge that you need to be baptized in the name of yes, Jesus sir. Christ they need to know it. the world is trying to replace it the world is trying to replace it with false false doctrine yes, sir. talking about three names Come on. three things that you need to be baptized in Come on. in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost Come on. and that's wrong Come on. and I believe it with all my heart it's wrong Come on. and it's important Amen. that I need to say this it's important that you need to say this Come on. if you believe it you need to shout it yes, that we need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ because it is the only way that you can be saved the only way in order to make it to heaven we need to be, have an understanding. Right, that's it. And to have an understanding, we need to read this book. Yes, sir. This book is one of the most important things in our lives. If you'll turn to Luke 10, Luke 10. verse 22. It says... Jesus says in this, All things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father, and the Father who is but the Son, and he whom the Son will reveal him. And they turned unto him, his disciples, and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. All right. For all I tell you, or sorry, for all, for I tell you, that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see. I want to pause right here for just a second. Kings and prophets, great men of this world, great leaders of this world, have desired to know the things that we are able to know. They desire to know, and they seek to know the things that we see, and the things that we hear, the things that we know. We take it for granted sometimes. Yes, we, we take it for granted the things that we know and the things that we see. We take it for granted the way of life. We take for granted this book. Yes, sir. This book right here is our only way to be saved. Come on. Come on. And we take it for granted. Come on. Yes, we do. I'm not here to be hard on y'all. I'm not here to... No. Exactly. Thank you, Bishop. I'm here to encourage you right. to get into this book. Yes, I'm not just preaching to you all. I'm not just preaching to the past. I'm preaching to myself. Come on, I need to get into this book. On, I need to get better. Yes. 
we are so lucky and privileged. Yes. Privileged. We, we are so, we should be honored to see the things. To continue, it says, and have not seen them. And to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. Again, some of the greatest people in the world considered by most people Come on. were not able and aren't able Come on. to understand this. Come on. A lot of times I don't think people realize that God has called each and every single one of us with a purpose All and right. for a reason and specially. He was not just randomly picking. He didn't just do a raffle and All pick right. out your name. All right. He chose you specifically to know the secrets of this world. All right. To understand and to have knowledge yes, and to have that understanding. Amen. If you will turn to Deuteronomy 1 verse 13. It says, Take you wise men and understanding. And know among your tribes, and I will make you rulers. I will make them rulers over you. All right. Now we've learned that we have an understanding that God's chose us. Mm -hmm. But another thing is that we need to use that understanding to bring people to Christ. All right. We need to draw them to Christ. Yes, sir. And when we do this, when we gain an understanding, when we are able to draw people. God says that we will make them rulers all right. over all of them. Amen. All right. I'm not saying that we're going to be kings with jewelry and sit on thrones. But when we get to heaven, we will be rulers. All right. We will be great. Come on. It's important for us to get into this book. It is important for us to have an understanding. Not just for us, but for all those that are out there. All the prodigal sons and daughters All right. that have been lost. Amen. I just want to thank everybody for listening to me. All right. And um, remember that we need to gain an understanding. We need to get into this book. All right. Good. Please join me as I praise the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, give the Lord some praise in here. Come on, it doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are. The word of God is right. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The word of God is right. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The word of God is right. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Come on, that's the song we used to sing. The word of God is right. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The word of God is right. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The word of God is right. Hallelujah to the Lamb. some faithful people. Sister Lisa has been faithful. Ever since I've been here, pretty close since I've been here, Sister Lisa has been faithful to this church and to her pastor. She has blessed her pastor. She has worked tirelessly for her pastor. She has worked for the church and done all that she could do to help the church of the Lord move on and roll on. She doesn't get enough accolades for it, but I'm saying publicly that she is a blessing to this house. 
we are appreciative to her. She's a very prayerful and studious person when it comes to this here. So we're going to ask her to come and ask the Lord to bless her and use her. And everybody say, bless Sister Lisa Morgan. Praise the Lord. First of all, I'd like to thank the Lord for allowing me to come up here and speak to everybody today. All right. Without Him, I wouldn't be here. All right. And I just give God all the glory. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank Hallelujah, you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If we could turn to Acts chapter 16. All right. I want to go to, I want to start at verse 14. Jesus. <clears throat> Is everybody there? Say amen. amen. Okay. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, of the city of Tyria, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. All right. Amen. And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, If we have judged me to be faithful to All the Lord, right. All right. come into my house yes. and abide there. And uh -huh. she constrained us. Uh -huh. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of di divination yes. uh -huh. met us, which brought her masters much gain by uh -huh. soothsaying. Right. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, uh -huh. which on. show unto us the way of salvation. Yes. And this did she many days. Uh -huh. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus on, Christ right. to come uh -huh. out of her. Yeah. And he came out of the same hour. On, and when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace into the rulers. And brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city, yes. and teach customs which are not lawful for Come us on. to receive, Bless neither it. to observe, being Romans. And to multitude, and the multitude rose together against them, and Come the magistrates on. rent off their yes. clothes, and command to beat them. Come on. And when they had laid many stripes Come upon on. them, Come they on. cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison Come and on. made their feet fast in the stocks? And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, Come on. and saying, "Praises unto God!" And the prisoners heard them. I want to. I want to stop here for just a second. All right. Paul and Silas was thrown into prison. Uh huh. For doing, for preaching the word of God Come and on. doing what God had asked them, told them to do. Yeah. And the people didn't like it. No, they don't. And Paul and Silas was in prison, and now it doesn't say right here, but he they were in prison for a while. Right. And it says that I want I want to go right here where it says that they at the midnight, All right. at midnight, Paul yes. and Silas prayed Come on. and sang praises unto God. Yes, Lord. And the prisoners heard them. Yes, they did. They sang praises Come to on. God while Come they on. was in prison. Come on. Come on, sis. At the very midnight hour Come of on. their trial. Yeah. In, their, in their trials, Come not on. knowing what they were going to do, yeah. they sang praises to the Lord. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loose. Because they praised and sang to the Lord in their midnight hour. That's what happens when you sing and you praise God. Whenever you're in the middle of your battle. Beloved, think it not strange concerning 
trying to try you yeah. as though some strange, some strange thing has happened unto oh. you. But rejoice! Rejoice! Inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, yeah. that when his glory shall be revealed, yeah. you may be glad also with his seeming joy. Oh, it says, but rejoice! Rejoice! And there's one of your trials that you are in.
the beautiful thing is that he's using these talents for the Lord and for the work of the Lord. Come on, somebody. He's using it for the work of the Lord. He has shown himself to be dedicated to his pastor and to the church. And we have a long list of people that haven't made it that far. But we know God is able to bring them in and help them. This right here will put some meat on your bones tonight. God is certainly good to us. Brother Jones, I know he's kind of at a disadvantage tonight. Because he don't have somebody to play for him. But we're still going to get behind him. You don't understand. You don't understand. God weaves things together in his own wisdom and his own way. I'm grateful that I'm in that house today. That we're one in this sanctuary. We're one in this church. We want to be one like God is one. So grateful today. So if you will, Brother Jones, if you'll come and give us what the Lord is giving you. We want you to know that we appreciate you. Somebody say bless Brother Jones. Come on, tell him say bless Brother Jones Church. Love him and he is a great friend of mine. It's kind of quiet in here. Yes. <laughs> Amen. 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 Oh, we got you back. Okay. Uh, Amen. <laughs> Maybe you ought to do it from your... Do what? See, you can do it from your organ. <laughs> no. From your organ. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I, I thank the Lord for the opportunity to get up here tonight. All right. I, uh, I honor my pastor, my bishop. Uh, thank him for welcome welcoming me here to this church. All right. And uh, I this is home. All yes. right. It's, it's, uh, thank the Lord. Some of you out there may understand that uh, I quit going to church under my father. Uh -huh. All right. Well, I come back un back into church. <laughs> <laughs> under my father <laughs> because uh, my father was his one of his last pastors that he right. sat under for so long right and uh, it's just like I sit over there sometimes and oh it's just like uh, I, you know I, it's dad again <laughs> Amen. Help us, Lord. and if you'll get your Bibles and uh, when uh, brother Jimmy started, his text. It's like, uh, well, here's mine. Acts 238. All right. All right. <laughs> 238 and Praise 39. The Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise and uh, the Lord. so if you get your Bibles, turn to Acts chapter 2, verse 38 and 39. It says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, all right. and to your children, and all to right. all that are afar off, Come even on. as many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. You can be seated. And if I was to title this tonight, it would be, I've gone too far. All right. Come on. I've gone too far. And I've taken my the text, Acts 38 and 39. But what I want you to focus on is a part, and to all that are afar off. I was one of those people that was afar off. I've heard Bishop Weatherly talk about the Bible, the coin, there's a carnal. All right. There's the flip side to spiritual. That's right. And I've never looked at the Bible that way, ever. All right. All right. I've never really looked at that. All right. And this scripture, 
I had a whole different text. And this, this scripture came to me today. All right. Later part of the day. All right. Like the Lord. And that part where it says, um, put my eyes back on here, where it says, unto all that are far off. All right. All right. And what Peter's talking about right there, Come on. when he wrote that, and he said that, was to the people afar off all over the world. All right, that's right. But on the flip side of that, come on. today, come on. there's a lot of people Amen. that are right here in this church and right. right here in this city yes, that are right. afar off. Yes, they are. Amen. I was one of those people. I yes. was so far away from God. Come on. I grew up. I was born and raised in come Pentecostal apostolic church yes, by sir. tremendous men of God. Yes, sir. Yes, raised right. up just on a pew. Come on. And I know what a move of God is. I've yes, seen sir. demons cast out. Come on. Yes, sir. I have seen people raised almost from the dead. That's one thing I haven't seen is total oh. death. Oh. Right. But they were so close. I have seen people healed. Oh. I have seen people filled with the yes, Holy Ghost sir. that no one thought was ever going oh. to make it. That's right. And I was having a conversation on Facebook today with an individual, and they said that they've gone too far. Hold on. They've done too much. Hold on, no. They've went too far. Come on. That God Come doesn't on. care. That's a lie for me. Well, it is. That's a lie for me. And I told this individual, I said, look. As long as you are concerned about your spirit Amen. and where your spirit on, is, right, there's hope for you. It's when you get to the point to where I don't need God. That's not me. All of us need God. I need God. Bishop needs God. Brother Wendley needs God. Sister Lisa. Sister Ashley. We all need God. And as long as we realize that, and as long as we are at that point, there is hope for our soul. There is hope for my soul. I had a mother that prayed for me. She never gave up on me. Never gave up. She would. I was out playing music all over the country. She would call me. What are you doing, son? Come on. What were you doing at such and such time? Well, most of the time it's pretty bad stuff. Right. I could have died. Right. My mom prayed for me. Yes, sir. And loved me. I didn't get me through this. No, sir. I didn't get me back right. here. Uh, I had people praying for me. Come on. I had people. I knew where yes. God was. Come on. I chose to not go there. But I knew where he was. And I knew at some point in time I come would on. be here. I come to this come church. On. I started working. Come just on. doing some things. Right. We sat right there. Not at that keyboard. But right where that keyboard yes, sat. And we started worshiping God. Yes, we started praising. Come we started having it. church in Come here. On, work. And while in the midst of that, I lifted my hands and God yes, renewed the Holy Ghost in my life right there. And ever since, I've not been looking back. There's nothing to look back there. I'm looking ahead. Yes. And you know, sometimes we think that it's all roses. Uh, no. no. I, uh, it was prophesied right here. And I was sitting at that pen. It seemed like a lot of stuff happens when I'm sitting there. Brother McCall said, you're going to go through some tough times. I'm going through tough times. I'm losing my home. Come on, that's all right. I'm in the midst of a battle. Yeah, that's all right. I've lost uh, a lot of stuff that I worked for that I right. valued. That's all right. That's and you know, Pastor, I don't care. That's it. All right. If God wants me to have that, I'll have that. If God wants me to have something else, that's it. what He'll that's give it. to me. And it doesn't matter how far I went. It doesn't matter what I did. It doesn't matter who I hurt. It doesn't matter anything what happened. God brought me into this church. God renewed my Holy Ghost. And it's all a new, and it's all a new start. It's a fresh start, and I feel the Holy Ghost. Amen, amen. A long time when I was in church, I have stood behind the pulpit and preached and never felt an ounce right. of the Holy Ghost. All right. Never felt it. All right. I stood right here, but I stood up there, and I preached. I sang. I played. 
Everybody thought I was in church. I knew I wasn't. All right, Matt. Everybody thought I was. I didn't care. I didn't want to be there. All right. I've pastored two churches in my life. All right. Both from the same man. From All my, right. my dad, when he left the first church that he retired from, I'm just sitting over there at the pen, and he says, I'm turning this church over to my son. All right. I was in no place Come on. to be a pastor. Right. But my dad, my pastor, said, this is what you're going to do. Uh -huh. So I took it. I didn't preach. I didn't pastor that church, but I made sure that that church got the right man. All right. Yeah. And that man came into that church, and that church grew. Yeah. And then when my dad retired the last time, he had me handle the whole thing for him. Right. And I wasn't in church. All right. I was not in church. Uh -huh. And there was some men of God that sat there that were kind of uh, didn't know what quite to think. Right. And I asked my dad, what do you want to happen? How do you want this to go? Uh -huh. And Brother Howard talked to him and he said, I think that's good. You're representing your dad. You're taking care All of right. him. So I took care of that for my dad. Uh -huh. And that church is full today. Yes, it is. That church has grown. Amen. That church, just from listening to the man of God, All right. I wasn't where I needed oh, to be, oh, but the man of God yeah. said, do this, oh. and I did what the yeah. man of God said. And because I did that, there is Amen. a church in both of those places Amen. today. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing. Oh, John 6, 20, 40. John 6, 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him right. may have everlasting life. And I All will right. raise him up at the last day. Uh -huh. The will of God is for every one of us, yes, it is. every man, yes, it is. every woman to be saved and to receive the Holy Ghost. Yes. Right. And all we have to do is ask. All right. And God will do it. And God will fill us with the Holy Ghost. All right. Raise your hands. Clap your hands together. Stand to your feet. Worship God. Brother Weatherly, that's like over there. Praise the Lord. You're not